Good afternoon, US. Good evening, UK, and welcome to Paranormal Path Peeps. Sorry about the delay. We had a slight technical issue. You know what it's like. That's the thing about StreamYard, isn't it? But um, right, tonight we're talking yeah. to Marie. So you're an investigative journalist, a professional astrologer, ufologist, numerologist, and ULC minister. Loads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm all, that's amazing I'm all over the place thank you yeah that's absolutely brilliant um also you've been in um mufon as well and you've um investigated at least 100 cases it's just wow yeah i did that yeah. is absolutely awesome hi nigel happy birthday for yesterday so nigel watches us and shares onto his page so thanks for that nigel it's wonderful Right, so um, I always start off with a question. Where did the paranormal side start for you? When was your first encounter? Oh, gosh. When did the paranormal start? Probably when I was really, really young. I always kind of grew up with, you know, certain family stories. Um, story about my grandfather seeing the ghost on a bridge. And uh, my grandmother used to tell us kind of some strange stories that maybe necessarily paranormal stories but something got odd and strange about uh, that sort of thing and um i think my first foyer into um you know looking as my first uh ufo sighting when i was around 10. so wow. that was um you know kind of a eye opener into Things aren't always what we seem and always curious about the world. So I kind of started it out and I think I got more involved in it, you know, reading about it when I was, you know, 13, 14 years old and started yeah. reading books on ghosts and, uh, you know, witches and, and all, all kinds of weird things. So they would always scare me, but I would always go back for more. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, bless you. It is a fascinating world, though, isn't it? Oh, it is, absolutely. And there's oh, so much there. You know, the paranormal covers such a wide range of things. You know, as you well know, ah. you're talking to people from all sorts of, uh, you know, of that from that world, I guess. So, um, What um, I like about it is the fact if you've encountered it, you know of its existence. But if you haven't, you can say, oh, no, that doesn't exist. Yeah. But once you see, you know, it's, you. And it's just so fascinating. Yeah. That's, that's true. Sometimes it's hard getting people to, you know, listen to you, I guess, if their their minds are closed, I get, you know, but uh, I've always kept at it. You know, it's like I've seen what I've seen, you know, and I may that's not true. be able to explain it or what it is, but I, you know, I didn't imagine it. So. I guess that's one thing. Well, I don't think I did anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. So, like, how many UFOs have you seen? Oh, I would have to say at least four or five during, wow. during my lifetime. So, and I think the last one was maybe about two years ago. And it was just one of those sightings, though. It's, you know, I was pretty sure it wasn't a plane, but because I was inside my house, kind of looking out the window, and it only happened, you know, a couple of, it only lasted maybe about 30 seconds. And, it's, you know, but it's, it's like, it was, definitely wasn't a plane. And yeah, um, that's again, in a, a downtown area to my home, and it looked like, it was almost like a, almost like a jet plane, almost wedge shaped. And it just kind of kept streaking across the sky. But it was moving so fast, and I like, I don't think that's a plane, you know. And I didn't hear any sound or anything. So, and wow. I did not report those to move on, yeah, although right. I, uh, maybe I should have. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, what? But if you know, if you see something like that, you would hear a sound on it, definitely. In a Very normal true. circumstances. Well, that's true, especially if it's uh, anything with a jet engine on it. Um, our area has, we've had um, uh, air shows here where they call in even, excuse me, even at the Blue Angels, 
you know, fly overhead. Yeah. And F-16, F-16s and F-14s, you can definitely hear them from a long ways away. So, <laughs> yeah, they don't, they make themselves known very quickly that they're in the area. Yeah. They're loud. Wow. It's just so fascinating, though, the world out there. I've seen something strange before, a UFO, and yeah, you know, like, okay, yeah, I live where there's loads of planes, but you know the difference. You really do, because it's the only time oh. it's anything like that. You know, I was driving yeah. six miles an hour, and yeah, I saw it ahead of me. Well, I don't know if it's one or two, to be fair, because the, light, the way the lights mm. were, it's really strange. But yeah, mm. but it, that was the days before social media as well. So, like, if you see something like that, you don't know where to report it to. It's very true. And I think now it's because <clears throat> and there's so many videos out there that and easy for people to fake them. You know, it's yeah, really hard right. for others to just look at it and say, oh, well, they, you know, maybe they had the technology or the, the app or whatever to alter, you know, a video or somehow fake it. And there is a lot. <clears throat> Even when I was when I was in MUFON, it was harder, you know, later on when you see so many fake photographs, you know, and it's, you know, I don't have to say, well, this is a fake. You have to prove it's a fake, you know, and I've had to do that many times, especially with photographs, you know, but that way you look at the photo and you look at the timestamp, you know, where it's at. Yeah. So um, it's just like I agree. Though. It's, yeah. It's like with the paranormal field, you get all the fake photos as well. And yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you sort of I think they're really interesting ones. I'm sorry, yeah. What? What I, I'm that? sorry, I didn't get that. Um, a lot of the photographs, even from the early days, they found a way to making them, you know, pretty creepy and, and interesting with ghosts standing behind them. So, yeah, but they were still fake. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It, there aren't many old genuine photos around, are there? A lot of them are like, there's one um, of a staircase in the UK, um, Raynham, and it's basically a ghost walking down a staircase. And that's been proved as fake, you know. Oh. So it, like, a lot of the old photos have been proved, you know, because, yeah. you know, people um, developed photos, didn't they? put people mm -hmm. had skill in those days and they could do things with them like as they can do now but just mm -hmm. a lot easier now isn't it photoshop yeah. absolutely i'm i'm kind of sad to hear that that was fake because i think i know which one you were talking about um yeah. i believe it in the church of dumfries was it is that the one it's like a spectral it's in Norfolk. Down it's in Norfolk. So oh, okay. So it's in um, a great big country house. So oh. it's probably a different one. But oh. yeah, it looks a good oh, photo. Okay. It's often yeah. used. Um, mm. Like if people mention ghosts, then very often people will use that photo, like for promotions and things like mm. that. <laughs> so you've written a That's book then? I have. And I'm writing another one. Uh, the first one, it was uh, Haunted Muskegon. And that is the town where I live. And um, the history of it goes back to the early 1700s. And we were well known for being the lumber, the lumber capital of the world, basically. So a lot, <clears throat> a lot of the mansions here were said to be haunted. So uh, I focused on the history of that. You know, some of the stories and the ghost stories, obviously. We are having a lot of trouble with the internet, I think, as well. We keep having problems. So, um, that is our, uh, oh, and are we back? Yeah, we're getting a lot of interference at the moment with the internet. I am struggling yeah. to hear you. It keeps dropping oh. out a bit. Not having much mm. look tonight. Um, yeah, I oh, I'm so sorry. And um, maybe it's my house. <laughs> oh, because my phone, my phone is acting up too. So, oh wow, um, it it does happen sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, it, 
it's um whether it's atmospherics or something uh, solar flares maybe well yeah there's a lot of that happening at the moment yeah sure. the, there are sort of a lot of atmospherics like we've got well we're getting a lot of rain around here so potentially like we're warned of storms as well mm. so yeah it, it could be anything just affecting things at the moment um i don't know if we should try again or just see how we go because oh it's, yeah well. it's connected at the moment so if you mention okay. the book then so um it's based around a lot of the properties then in the area yes it is um Muskegon area is uh very close to um lake michigan we're kind of a, a we're a port city here so um uh, as I said, it goes back to the early 1700s, back in the Native American days, but, you know, it's been a city since the 1800s. So, and there was um, several older houses in the area that the lumber barons built, um, and several of them were, are said to be haunted, and it falls other places around the area too, um, an old hospital area, and uh, where a lot of stuff, some very creepy stuff has went on. So, of course, there's 13 stories in my book, and hopefully oh, 13 in nice the next number. one too. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Prophetic have, number. Have you actually encountered anything in the area yourself? Um, the only place that I went out to myself was uh, the Nunica Cemetery. It's called. And it's supposedly one of the most haunted areas in Muskegon County. So um, I went out there for the channel that I work for. I do a show called Paranormal Muskegon. And uh, so we went out there and saw what we could pick up. But uh, that particular day, we really didn't get any readings. So <clears throat> but I go out there with, I went out there with Lakeshore Paranormal. So I've worked with okay. him quite a bit on the book. So, um, uh, yeah, but well, you don't, you know, you don't get things every time you go out. So, way it works, isn't it? You never know when something's <laughs> going to come through. Yeah. It's just the look of a drawer, isn't it? But, well. yeah, I hope to go out again and do some more of that kind of work when, you know, kind of when this book is all finished and, you know, wrap up some of that stuff. I can actually kind of go out with some of the paranormal hunters and uh, see what we yeah. can find. You know, we'll follow them around with a camera. <laughs> yeah. What's the uh, strangest paranormal experience you've had then? Um, I can't really say that I've had any of the paranormal type, you know, ghostly right, okay. things. Uh, really, um, I'm open to the possibility, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I d absolutely don't discount the things that people tell me, you know. Um, That's good. So you still wait yeah, and even the stories that you know that I've I've heard in doing research, research into my sources. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am kind of a skeptic about a lot of things, and I go for you know the evidence, you know, and yeah. things like that. But you know, I don't I don't discount what people tell me, and I don't discount that there is paranormal and that there are energy fields or energy forces or that th that energy gets stuck you know in the environment or where people lived you know I, I i believe that's quite real so so i haven't really had those experiences myself I'm yeah pretty Never. sure it exists yeah you, you so, don't know you, you know one day it like creeps upon you and that's it you know and mm -hmm. from there on you start encountering more yeah. Well, that's that's what I found anyway. It's it yeah. is really unusual. But so UFO side of things you've investigated a lot then? A hundred cases? Yeah, quite a few. Uh yeah, a hundred cases in Michigan and then um about ten, maybe more in other states. I worked for a, a group of part of MUFON that did uh it was called a case management system or case management, and we would go in and do extra cases that they hadn't had a chance to do. So I worked cases out in Kansas, and I was uh, 
um, I was a national director for Montana uh, for right. a short time before I did resign that position. Um, but there was some really interesting cases in Montana, uh, mainly because of the fact that they were over Maelstrom Air Force Base. So right. some of those are, yeah, some of those were pretty, pretty intriguing. And a couple that I, I had been involved in were, um, got the attention of um, possibly to be put on the History Channel, although because they weren't able to contact the witnesses, they had to, you know, kind of let let that one go. But, um, so I think those were the, I'm sorry, go ahead. So how many of these cases did you think were sort of credible? Um. Percentage-wise are the ones I did. I guess I never really counted those, but I would have to say about 5 to 15% of those were very credible, and there were ones that I had listed as unknown. Wow. But, Amazing, you know, yeah. that, that being said, the majority of the cases that I personally worked on here in Michigan – were pretty much lights in the sky and a yeah. lot of them uh, that maybe were a little bit more interesting kind of turned out to be you know just um just natural phenomena or just you know some other random things there were a few hoaxes you know a couple yeah. and those are the ones that say the, usually photographic hoaxes and it's like yeah, yeah. that's a fake but now i gotta prove it <laughs> Love you know it. So yeah. those are the smoking gun type, you know, it's like, I'm uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> not having it. Um, so what was the but, strangest approach uh, you had there? The strangest what case? The strangest UFO oh, occurrence which you um, looked at? Strangest case? Um. I think that the ones I can recall that I did was the one in Montana is because the, the witness uh, who, who, who we've got a lot of inter we're get still getting loads of interference go through me directly went through it was recorded by possible yeah so um, the most intriguing and interesting one was the one in Montana because of the person that um, reported it was um, part of the OSI, which is the Office of, um, I can't think of it, the Office of Strategic. I, okay. I, I really don't remember the name of it, but it was part of the yeah. Ostrom. I'm sorry, I got a mind blank there. but he was a very credible witness and they had said that the, they had a power outage at that same time that okay. they had seen the UFO over the base. They had went out for 10 minutes and they were aware of it, but I think he didn't want to come forward is because of his position in the military. Yeah. So we were never able to contact him at all. But just the fact that it was over, um, you know, nuclear missile base is, okay. you know, the biggest reason why it's like, and has that oh wow factor. <laughs> it's like, what are they doing yeah. there? That's so, right. And, well, I, I did speak to Preston Dennett twice. So he, he knows a lot about UFOs and it seems like they often try to help us. So, yeah. Um, being located over a base like that, then, yeah, I can imagine they're trying to protect mm -hmm. us, which is uh, one of the theories which comes through, really. So I think you're right. I think you're right, because uh, even a case that uh, um, was known about there and that happened in the 60s and 70s or early 60s, that um, all of the missiles had went off line you know, right, right in a yes. row. And I, I think that's just kind of a letting us know that we really need to stop and kind of take stock of what we're doing, you know, because it was a very scary moment that they were all 
you know, and other in another time was they all went online in moments before they would have been fired. I believe that was towards Russia um, or the opposite. That was another case, I believe, uh, 19, um, 1940s. Wow. I could be wrong about that. But they went back on offline right in the nick of time. In other words, you know, we better check what we're doing. We don't yeah. want to have nuclear war. So um, I think they definitely keep watch over that. Yeah. Especially any of, them, any, any of the sites. Um, that, that does seem to be a view of quite a few people sort of into that, you know, ufology field that we mm -hmm. do kind of try and help us. Like, my gosh, humans are making a mess of things, aren't they? All around <laughs> yeah. the world. You know, you yeah. don't really know what, what we're the, the weather systems and things like that. You just have no idea, really, what is going on. And yeah, yeah it's it's wow. just fascinating. It really is with the whole thing. Yeah. So, what other encounters have you heard about? Um, gosh, you know, it's it's been a few years, well, two or three years since I've actually really been. Um, keeping track of, uh, you know, what's going on in the UFO field, except, yeah. you know, the, the big news over the last, you know, couple of years, yeah. um, especially the one just recently, you know, that, with a that is, yeah, it's with brilliant. The, Finally, something is coming out officially, isn't it? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. that's what it means, because they kind of tend to, you know, dangle a carrot in front of our nose, and then they, <laughs> they pull it away. It's like, no, and I, I am seeing a lot more um, just mainstream media talking about it. But in a way, it, it almost what my fear is that it starts to muddy the water because they start having a lot of very, very frivolous, you know, uh, stories out there. And people start to, you know, number one, turn a blind eye or deaf ear. To all of that, the real stories, um, like you know David Grush, you know, and his sources, they start just putting it all in the pile of saying, "Oh, it's just a bunch of rubbish," because they see everything else, you know, online. Or I haven't even some of them I haven't read, but I start seeing these headlines, you know, yeah. this person saying that and that person saying that, and they're putting a lot of the very very the outlandish claims out there to make it all seem like it's all craziness. You know, we're a bunch of crazies when you see this or say this. You know, you're you know, you're either a conspiracy theorist or you're you know deluded. So I mean that's the fear there. There's so much going on that we just say, oh we're just gonna throw it all on a rubbish pile and not listen to any of it anymore. And I think so, it kind so of tends to be that way with a lot of things. So what did people around you think when the news came out from the, the um, from Washington? Um, well, I haven't really had a chance to discuss it with any of the, the you know, UFO people per se. But yeah. what I it was reading, you know, in some of the posts that or, you know, even um, people that I follow, you know, on YouTube and that, that they're, you know, encouraged uh about it also that it's actually going to mean opening up into some real investigation and real transparency for all of us you know not just yeah. in the u.s but you know in the uk and everywhere uh, other countries seem to be a little bit more open about it you know even in the information that they put out there you know they're they're yeah. aware of it and they they're also aware that they don't really have definitive answers for any of it so yeah we we really don't say a lot about it you know you don't hear of many reports in the uk you know obviously yeah. there's channels what come through and people tell their stories but like you don't hear anything from the government on it <laughs> yeah, yeah i have kind of found like, that um uh, Richard Dolan is one that is also, I, I don't know if you're familiar with him no. because he was a historian, but he's also, you know, talks about the history of even the ufology field. And, you know, he covers a lot of that, both in 
you know, basically worldwide, you know, uh, or in the U.S. But um, and Nick Pope, um, are you familiar with yeah. Nick Pope? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that he worked for the Minister of Defense, if I'm correct, yeah. for many, many years. And he's kind of been more open about, uh, you know, the field and getting uh, getting more information out to the public. So yeah, it would be it would be good if things sort of did come out because I think the public are more ready now. Like I, I think, think so when, when like what happened with Roswell, I don't think people were probably ready. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if it came out that something did happen there, which yeah, yeah I think it did. You know, oh, I it's think so too. Yeah. That, yeah, it, I think yeah. It. And, well, you know, you can't actually get access to it now, can you? You know, you're not allowed. To no, it. no. Yeah, that I mean, obviously, that's the problem. A lot of the the actual records probably have disappeared long ago. Um, oh, I have I researched Roswell quite a bit early on, you know, but the only thing I would ever be able to find are obviously just transcripts. And, yeah. uh, you know, about who who said what, you know, in, in reading over the timeline of, you know, how it came down and all of the people that were involved. Yeah. You know, in even, um, you know, and even after that, like uh, Jesse Marcel, you know, and his son and grandson, and he actually is very still widely involved with you know, ufology, you know, that talks yeah. about, you know, seeing the artifacts you know, back when he was a child. So you have to, you know, there, you know, there are real stories there and they're, they're not just stories, you know, there's physical evidence, something, even though yeah. most of it was picked up <laughs> that something went on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, certainly yeah, I, but I think maybe in those days, people would just been too scared for that to come out. Do you? Got problems with the dog now. <laughs> Oops. I think the internet's gone again. We do seem to be having a lot of connection problems today. I'm sorry, could the you internet's that? gone again? I think we're having real trouble know. with the internet again. I know he's I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> oh, I know. It just keeps slowing down. You have some company. You have some company there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know what's wrong with him. He needs to sleep. So, yeah, he's kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with him, to be fair. But yeah, <laughs> put his head on my shoulder. Yeah. He'll go to sleep probably like that. I don't know. But, yeah, but, you know, it is incredible. And it, it is nice that something is finally coming out and, I guess it's a matter of watching the stories, isn't it? To see what develops from there. Hmm. Yeah. And hope that yep. you do get like genuine information. Yeah. And that's a, yeah, the that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. The truth is out there and hopefully we get to hear about it. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, that that's right. Good. Yeah. It 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 is fascinating. So um mm -hmm. your your new book, when when will that be out? What's it called? Um, it's called Haunted Nuevo County, and it sh should be out sometime um, 2024. I'm not quite sure of the exact yeah. timeline. So um, I'm thinking maybe July or August, but I, I'm still... Uh, yeah. I, I totally get you because I thought I'd fi I've done a book and I thought I'd finished it like two years ago. Still not got <laughs> it published. So I'm not oh, quite okay. sure... I I've just kind of got onto the editing stage. It's just, um, yeah. oh gosh, just to get it edited. It's hard enough, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. I, yeah. I, I was telling my daughter, tell my daughter what I still had to do on that. She goes, oh, sounds like school. <laughs> it's like, yeah, in a way. It definitely does. You know, all the line spacing and paragraphs and, you know, words and capitalizations and all of that. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> so. Sorry about him. I don't know what is, um... <laughs> <laughs> he won't leave me alone. It's, just... <laughs> it's not usually like this, so I don't know what he he's wants, doing. He wants to be part of the show. <laughs> yeah. 
he's used to <laughs> so I don't know really what's going on. To be fair. Yeah. Sorry about this. Oh gosh. <laughs> Fight with the dog. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, he wants the seat. He's like, that's a different no, kind of interference no. we have going yeah, on. No. We had internet issues, now we've got dog issues. <laughs> yeah, he's got a mood on, so I don't know what's going on. I think he has, I don't know. I think he wants to go in the other room, but he can't because the door's shut, so he'll have to wait. But, yeah. Um, so what are your plans then? Um, so when you do go out with the paranormal teams, what do you sort of do? Um, I think hopefully I'd be able to go out into, you know, some of the – the places here in Muskegon that, or maybe even county wise that, you know, are claimed to be haunted, you know, um, and even maybe some of the places that I have, you know, in both my books, Muskegon and in New yeah. County, you know, I would like to be able to go back to some of those and kind of explore myself if they're open, you know, to that sort of thing. Um, there were a couple of them, you know, the, currently that uh, they had been investigated but the buildings are, are closed down so um well one really interesting thing about this book well most people aren't if you you know if this is in a, a county in michigan it's called nuego county which is up north a uh, very well known i mean obviously you know for the lumber that was taken out of it but one really interesting fact is that Al Capone was very, um, he was very partial to going to that area. And some oh, of the okay. places that I had, uh, you know, had visited um, had been frequented by Al Capone. So, um, in fact, um, there's a, a place up there in the town of Nuevo that was owned by his accountant. So wow. um, yeah, it's it's claimed that he spent some time there, you know, doing whatever partying, and you know, I have heard rumors that uh, there were a few people killed up there somewhere. I'm not sure, you know, he where. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and um, I had actually before I started researching, I was I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of the connection between Al Capone and that county at all, you know? Wow. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fascinating history, even without the ghost aspect. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. And that's the thing about paranormal. A lot of it is down to the original history and the history of the land as well. So obviously the, the, the areas where you are, it's got a lot of history, hasn't it? Yes, yes, it does. Um, I think this area from the Muskegon to that county up along the shores of Lake Michigan were some of the first traveled, you know, like, you know, the early, early uh, trappers, you know, Native Americans and French trappers. Yeah. Um, that's who basically started a lot of the, uh, the encampments here that later became towns and um there is um, a forest that's called Manistee National Forest up in that county. It covers almost a million acres of land, a million, million square miles of land. So there are a lot of the, the stories and, and even the history has a lot to do with, you know, the forest and, um, you know, and the trappers and Native Americans and all of that. You know, very much um, the county is like very much iconic of what pioneers you know in the united states yeah. would have been because they were very 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 strong very um uh, strong work ethic you know and survival skills so i mean i love that part of the history even in this area but you know especially them because it was so um it was wilderness you know they act out a living in you know abject wilderness you know cutting down the trees to make their homes you know and, and all of that so that fascinates me and of course any of that leaves its energy too it leaves its imprint you know on the land it, it, it leaves its imprint on places that where they were which you probably know you know studying ghost 
yes you know, that manifestation yourself um some of the stories that uh, at least one of them is actually kind of based on uh mesh the, the forest up there and the idea of um uh, the spirits of the woods, you know, the guardian spirits oh, wow. that, that, um, you know, they're protected because, you know, stories of, you know, Bigfoot and Dogman and, you know, and all of those, um, you know, other entities that people see my, I'm my theory, or maybe not just mine is that perhaps they are a type of guardian of the woods that people go into that and they they don't have um they don't respect the woods you know and they don't respect you know or the, you know whatever the the nature part of it they um got to tend to get a little irritated and you know make sure that people leave <laughs> wow. so um but it, it's very intriguing then because it it's like covering all areas of field <laughs> yeah yeah, so it, 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 you've got yeah. the woods and the creatures or whatever happens there, you know, Bigfoot and everything, and then, you know, this ufology side of things, and then the paranormal as well with the old houses and then on the old land as well, because it would have been traumatic in those times as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It would yeah, be hard when the settlers yeah. come in, you know, trying to build the cities yeah. and everything. So. Yeah, there is one story that... Uh... Yeah, there's quite a few stories in there that I'm, you know, I'm just uh, very um, uh, amazed by their um, their ability to survive and their willingness, you know, to get through it. Um, there is one yeah. uh, story about a woman by the name of Florence. Her name was Florence, Dr. Dr. Florence Quick. And she was, you know, a pioneer, just uh, um, pioneer woman. And she actually, her and her brother, survived a year in a hut in the wilderness until wow. Native Americans rescued them. So she lived with the Native Americans um, for you know quite a bit of time and then went to work for a family. But she became like a, a natural healer, you know, with her herbs and you know, just helping people in all she could. So and it is said that they her spirit can be seen, you know, walking along the woods, you know, maybe picking flowers and that. So I love that story because I love yeah. the character. So that's, that's that is so beautiful, yeah. And it is. if they did is. that in life, then yeah, yeah, of course we could do that yeah. now, can't they? Sort yeah. of moving on and show themselves to whoever's sort of around and receptive to that. That's yeah. brilliant. Very true. Um, Mandy says, "What's the most active haunting you have investigated?" So, so um, what's the most active place that you know of then and um, what sort of um have you heard coming from there um in muskegon county i would have to say that while i did investigate it it was investigated by a group of um paranormal investigators here in muskegon and i did uh i write about that in on in muskegon and that is it's a um, it's a World War II ship. It's called the LST-393, and it is a museum now. But you know, when you walk, when you walk in there, you can feel the energy. You know, and uh, they have actually believed they have seen apparitions, an apparition. You know, in there, especially, you know, um, I guess in the engine room. But I did tour it. I, I took photographs in there and I did feel, you know, a lot of the, just a lot of the energy, perhaps the, you know, the artifacts that are there. And uh, when I went into the engine room to take photographs, I, you know, I just kind of felt a sense of maybe I, that it shouldn't be there. And I don't know if that's just because I'm aware of the history of it and because it was just kind of close in there, you know, and I was by myself. <laughs> the only one down there you know in the, the hull of a ship so um you know i could feel it so it, um but there was an area there like i don't feel like i should go any closer and that was where they had said that they had seen an apparition so um you know that's the one that really made an impression on me um and let's see 
So in that museum well, then, the artifacts, what, what sort of artifacts were they? Were the local ones or were they from the settlers previously or what sort of museum was it? Oh, in the ship museum? Oh, right, okay. Oh, oh in, the sh in the ship museum, it's the artifacts from any person or in the military, you know, obviously they were donated from yeah. any, bran any branch of the service you know, throughout the years. But, but the ship itself was in Normandy on D-Day. Wow. So um, the history is, you know, they, a lot of, there were a lot of prisoners, you know, on board. They would transport prisoners. Obviously some didn't survive. Um, yeah. Or not prisoners. Uh, the wounded, but they also carried prisoners of war. They had, I think it was over 800 prisoners of war was on the ship wow. so there's just a lot of you know a lot of history there's a lot of you know even the you know the picking up that type of energy from their being there or even the attachments to the artifacts themselves that, uh, that sounds the story, it, it is it's a it's an awe-inspiring ship it's only one of two left out of the i think 1100 that were built so it, it is great that things like that do exist. Um, yeah. there's something like in our local marina, and it's one of the little tiny landing craft, and it, that's still used, you know, just down our yeah. a local river. And you know, yeah. it's not big, but it's just fascinating these things and like where they are as well because they're still in existence mm -hmm. in places. Very true. Very true. Oh, yeah. okay. So Andy is hearing, so he can hear a piano sound every so often. Also, we're hearing a man's voice saying one word which he can't understand. That's interesting. No, no, there's no one here but me that I know of. <laughs> it, it is strange because I do I hear like a little dinging sound. Yeah, we, it, do, um, we sort of get a lot of kind interference. Of feedback. Yeah. yeah. I, I can hear some of the interference almost like a, it's the feed, kind of like a feedback from the sound every once in a while. Oh, so, wow. He's, Strange. He's got a little, S, he's got a little, some of the, S, some of the Estes method going on there. <laughs> can you yeah, hear that? maybe. Oh, that's, um, that's fascinating. We've got a question here, Ben, from Rich. Um, what would really scare you? Really scare me. Hmm. That's a hard Gosh. one. Yeah, that's a hard one. Oops. Um, I actually think. Um, see, I'm actually I'm not really much of a a, a ghost hunter myself. I do yeah. tend to stay away from anything that I feel is is negative or malevolent Mal <laughs> see yeah. my yeah you know there's interference because i can't talk right <laughs> but uh just uh, a very negative or something that was going to harm me i do i am pretty intuitive you know like that so i do pick yeah. up on some of that new negative energy and i definitely feel if it's something that's going to harm me i would you know i definitely would leave so I have been in places that um, older houses and actually there's a museum down where I live that I had a sense that I didn't started not to feel well. I started feeling very weak, like my blood sugar went to the floor, you know, just went to the bottom yeah. of my feet. And I'm like, I have to get out of here. And I didn't know really what it was, but the minute I got down on the second floor, it stopped. So yeah. like it wasn't a sense of fear, but it was something that, you know, that there was something not right. And I, you know, I had to, I had to leave, but uh, yeah, can, truthfully, um, not, a, yeah. not a lot scares me. And maybe that's just my own foolishness, but you know, yeah, I, it, I have to it say. Doesn't, that, it doesn't scare me. It's more for humans what scare me. No. Like, um, we, we went <laughs> so somewhere. that's true. <laughs> three of us went to some woods the other night and it's actually on my page and you know you go up and you're sort of walking up a hill in these old trees 
and there's this old cave um it was like stone and somebody actually dug it out made it into a cave and lived there in the 1100s so there you are three of us in the woods and then four people approached and you think oh my god what's going on and then mm -hmm. like it just looked a bit shifty he said you go hunters yeah oh good then you know because like mm -hmm. you're, you're in the woods in the middle of nowhere and then <laughs> that happens yeah. and then we just like started again and then like 10 others arrived it's like what <laughs> so yeah <laughs> they were ghost hunters as well but but when we first got there there's this guy and he's just like taking photos and <laughs> it's a, like a little cave with a little doorway and he's like standing in the doorway going like this and smiling and it's like okay we're kind of watching him from the bottom of the stairs and thinking well you know what's going on here and it, it is um yeah and then when we sort of went up to join him he was a bit um yeah random to be fair <laughs> so yeah. you won't want to be there when it's dark with him to be fair, you know oh. so luckily he left quite oh. quick <laughs> yeah but yeah Definitely. we've got a uh, wes coleman he's from canada how you doing wes so um rich rich says uh Feeling someone was welcoming you and following you around. Oh, bless you. Yeah, <laughs> Andy. Um, we tried to investigate and um, the, there were just the three of us and then four joined us and then loads joined. So it just got a bit busy, really. So the other group went mm. in and they did, you know, but we had to sort of nip back, um, cooked fam you know, t for family reasons. So... It, it was an interesting night to meet them, though. Nottinghamshire Paranormal, it's a local team, and then also some YouTubers and um, an Urbexer as well. So, it's yeah, it's brilliant meeting them. But we we need to go back. Um, it was weird when the uh, when it gets dark, though. It totally changed. The energy totally changes so much. So I've been there before, and then it gets really... It's like the woods come in, you know? It's, it's so... It seems so quiet as well. Well, apart from the people, but yeah, it's fascinating. Um, Rich Harrell, he says, um, "What do you? How do you feel about aliens walking among us? Do you believe they do?" Yes, I do. I, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that they might not. I maybe I should clarify that. I think that there's they they can they don't it's not something that that they're they're here you know on a consistent basis i think possibly they can move in between wherever the dimensions that they are from i i think there is evidence <laughs> oh. Probably those in power, the government. Um, higher people perhaps have it. So I don't know. I, I hear that a bit about aliens, you know, walking among us. But I did quite a bit of research on different on different um, bloodline, you know, the bloodlines and, yeah. you know, different, especially, especially the RH factor being a different, um, actually different that humans which That's interesting. It's interesting but to me it's also kind of scary yeah it is yeah but i wouldn't go so far to say to tell people that anyone with a dna you know that has an rh factor you know is an alien or anything like that because that can be a dangerous thing oh you know, gosh because, absolutely. yeah you know it, it i think that's fascinating to me it's all about it's about, you know, the science and about, you know, the evidence. And there is a lot to, you know, what he says is that, you know, that, you know, other intelligences, I don't know if we'd call them aliens, other intelligences or other, you know, entities can and do interact with humans. Yeah. They have since probably we're, we, we're humans. Yeah, it's certainly very fascinating, isn't it? The whole I field and, you know, anything, yeah. the paranormal, you follow. Oh, yeah, it. yeah, I do. I love it. And, it, you know, yeah. it's hard to get the science behind it. And that's what makes it more fascinating. 
trying to prove something, you yeah. know, like person yeah. seen something or it's <laughs> yeah. something with their own eyes. But you know, it's always like mm. I went I went the still counts, isn't it? Because the photos or the video yeah. evidence don't always stack up or they're not available. Yeah. So it's that's, that's true and it 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 depends on who you talk to. I mean if you have an open mind and you do want to, you know, you look at the evidence and you see that and say, well, hmm, maybe there's something here. But, you know, yeah. with a closed mind of, you know, of anything, no matter what the evidence, no matter what the truth, either visual That's or, right. you know, photographic or anything, it's you're just going to say, well, you know, I just I don't believe it. So it's all yeah. about, you know, taking a real hard look at it and saying, yeah, there's something there. You know, maybe maybe we're not, not alone. You know, yeah, and right. I think that you know the the whole congressional meetings has a lot more people saying, hmm, maybe there is something there. The unfortunate yeah. thing is about it is that it had to take three or four people from the high ups before they yeah. would believe it, even though there has been millions, millions of people saying this for years. And that's right. Tons of evidence, you know, like, oh, well, you're, you know, you, you, you're nobody, you know, we're not going to believe you. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, right. and I get, I, I get that though. You have to have, you know, credible witnesses. In other words, a, a credible witness to them is someone that um, is a trained observer. You know, that was like in, even in MUFON, you know, there are a lot of people that have been, have former military or former, um, you know, police, or, well, like myself, I worked in the medical field. So I worked in laboratories, and I was trained in, you know, the scientific process, you know, how to gather evidence, you know, even physical evidence, and even work more with MUFON, you know, and learn that. Yeah. So it's like, that, that's credible. And so when you, and that's why they take people that were in the military or airline pilots and that, uh, you know, at a higher regard than someone says, you know, yeah, I was out one night and you know, I saw this. Well, so yeah, now we know we can believe you. <laughs> you know, yeah, like you know, I, left, I left the bar and I saw this light, you know, yeah, 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 you know, but yeah, it, you know, it's fascinating what's out there, and yeah, information will slowly come out. And it, it's nice that they've had the um, discussion at Congress, and yeah, certainly watching out to see what else comes out on that. Yeah. Um, yeah me too. So we've got another question. Here you go from Andy Tom. Thanks, Andy. So, have you come across an elemental? Yeah. I don't know. Right. I really don't know. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't think they would scare me because I have have been part of you know ceremonies that were you know based in calling forth um you know the energies and powers you know the like rituals pagan type you know oh, it, it's part of a yeah i mean it's part of a thing yeah and they're they're really nice to me it's a connection to everything else around us you know yeah. it's a connection to nature so in a way i'm not that that doesn't scare me. I guess what would scare me is what should scare people is, you know, calling on one certain elemental and energy force over and over and over on a consistent basis, because what they don't realize is that they change, you know, what you think is a positive elemental or energy force can turn and they can turn into something negative. So, yeah. It's, they can show show themselves as something they're not a yeah a different uh, you know different really, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah sort of known it before where i've like been to, um communicating with something and then you think well this isn't right in yeah. i don't know you just get a sixth sense don't you yeah you, sort of you, you have to, yep. you're on the board to kind of question it and go <laughs> right okay no yeah. you're not telling the truth here you know yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I just naturally sort of think, well, that's wrong. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that the woods and the forest that you mentioned, that sounds interesting. It is. And that's, 
It really is fascinating because, you know, we mentioned the elementals because that's part of it too, are, you know, some of them, they have put, theorized that, you know, even Bigfoot, you know, while people see him as being a physical, maybe he's part of a, you know, that same thing, like a guardian or an elemental that is there to protect the woods. But, you know, I don't know that uh, I kind of, I had questioned that and then I came across other, you know, researchers and uh, paranormals that were actually proposing that theory too. So I was like, well, that's interesting. You know, I'll look into that. So. Yeah. Uh, there's just so much, isn't there? And I'm not quite sure about it either. I haven't run across Bigfoot, although I do. Yeah. Uh, I think the reception's going a bit dodgy again, but it, it, it's just fascinating, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. you know, if you, you try and like um, open your mind yes. and wow, the things you can experience is. Yeah, it's, it's fine talking to people who kind of uh, do paranormal or, you know, or you ufology, but you try and speak to somebody who doesn't believe in it. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> totally different, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's true. And people, my family's always put up with me with a with my interest in the paranormal and UFOs and, and that. And uh, my daughter even bought me a... Um, an alien driver's license one uh, as a joke you know oh, it's a picture of an alien yeah it was a name alien you know at a highway so i still have that somewhere i'll have to post it one of these days you know so yeah, that's lovely. And she goes and then when i wrote the book she goes you know i'm proud of you you're an inspiration that you've always had this interest in this kind of stuff and you know now you've wrote a book about it Oh, so, that's fasc like, it's fascinating it really so is just, uh, so for anybody who's seen. interested then um your book have you mentioned the name of it and um, it's available from amazon isn't it yes it is it is haunted muskegon it is by arcadia publishing and it's available i think barnes and nobles um online i know it's uh, yeah it's available at amazon most bookstores um i know it was carried in australia i don't know in the uk but i believe it was released worldwide you know in august so uh, it's part of the uh, haunted america series so oh, yeah. and then right. and the next the next one is too and that like i said that's going to be out in 2024 Haunted Nuevo County, you know, a lot of stories, you know, like I said, it focus on um, um, that Al Capone was in the area, you know, just part of a, you know, historically, you know, I don't think he haunts it. Maybe some of his victims do, but you yeah, know, <laughs> I don't that, know about that. Fascinating though, Al Capone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd I'm hoping to investigate that, that accountants. Yeah. Yeah. That would, and yeah, that is, um, it is uh, supposedly haunted, you know, that that house, and it's a beautiful house. Um, wow. The owner was nice enough to give me a tour. And there was a little spot there that when we were, I was standing up there, and it was at the top of the stairs, like, ah, oh. it was one of those times, like, I think I need to go downstairs. I just got to like, feel a little warm and just kind of like a little woozy. And I don't know if it's because I was at the top of the stairs. Yeah. So I, was, like, I need to go downstairs. So. Uh, but it, it is a beautiful home. And uh, they actually had, um, I'm not sure how many exorcists come in and do a cleansing. So after that, they said there was no, no more um, paranormal activity. I believe it was actually, they had a, they had a paranormal uh, group come in through the, um, I don't know if it was a History Channel or one of them. Haunted, some haunted uh, series actually came in and did that. That was a few years ago. Wow. So it's kind of well known to be a, one of the haunted spots up there. So, Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I guess with having um, exorcists in, they don't want um, anybody in anymore. Because it yeah. would like, upset it all again, maybe. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably, it might. I've heard that, that you've come in, you know, dressed as a priest. And oh, gosh, <laughs> you might have some bad things happen to you. 
it's fascinating. Uh, so we've got um, Annette then. So Annette says, I think when you start looking into these things, you're opening to a higher vibration and get to see things. This is why those who don't believe or look see nothing. And that's it. If you go in like, oh, you know, what am I here for and all that, well, you're not going to, are you? A lot of like you can sort of go along to some events and people are basically dragged there by the partner. They don't want to be yeah. there, and then, so the way they yeah. are, it kind of affects everybody in the activity. What you get in the room, don't you? Yeah. It can be really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got um, Mandy. It's funny, my little boy who's seven is currently doing his own research about extinct animals via YouTube, dodos, woolly mammoths, etc. And he asked why they became extinct. So I told him because we're building houses and cutting down trees, which take away their habitat. He became very upset at how we can do that to animals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. bless him. That yeah. yeah, that is so true, isn't it? Very true. That's um... you know, like what what humans have done. Like you know, you've got all so... the rainforests and, yeah. and sort of central southern America. They've all a lot of those have gone, haven't they? And uh, yeah, we have made a lot of mistakes. But and coincidentally, um, <laughs> absolutely, we still keep making them. But oh god, yeah. Coincidentally, gotcha. he mentioned man woolly mammoths. Um, he mentioned woolly mammoths and Muskegon yeah. area. Actually, this I think this county we have actually found the bones of uh, the woolly mammoth, and our museum wow. has a life. A life-size replica of a woolly mammoth and there's a statue of it in front of the museum so that's in my book so wow um, that's cool yeah there's uh, the museum has some of the bones of the the mammoth that they found so um, it's amazing how mandy yeah. picked up on that though yeah he did that, that's fascinating about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where did you get that from yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> Where on earth did you get that, that comment from Mandy? Because it just sounds, yeah. That's fascinating, yeah. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's very, I don't think I've been anywhere where they have them. Um, less natural, uh, uh, should be, but they've got loads of things there. Oh, uh, it's fascinating, that is. But I want to thank everyone who's like asked questions, who's watched and everything. And sorry about the internet, it's been a bit dodgy tonight. It might be atmospherics or something. But thank you so much, Marie, as well, for joining us. It's been really interesting. And oh, thank wow, you, for having you. you live in an amazing place. You know, so much happening around you. And yeah. it's great that, oh, oh, if we have a quick question then before we go. One last question. So um, Andy says, um, you mentioned Al Capone. Have you actually sensed, seen someone famous in the spirit world? No, no, unfortunately I haven't. That would be fantastic though. Yeah. I actually, I, I've had dreams of, of, um, not really, I don't know if it was being a famous person, but it was a dream where I was doing something that was an al alchemical process. And I didn't know what it, I don't remember the word, but when I looked it up, it that's what it was. It was a process. And when you do alchemy and I was doing it in the dream, but I didn't even know what I was doing. So wow. when I researched it, it was um, par is his Paracelsus, where where we get the name Paracelsus. His name wow. I he's got a very long name, Bombastus Celsius, Paracelsus is that his name. And so it's like, why would I have a dream that I was doing this process? I had no idea what I was doing until I looked it up. So like, what was I him? <laughs> So wow. like, I don't know why, you know, I, I, I'm not about to say, yeah, I, I was him in a former life. Although when I, I read about his life, I'm like, well, what he does kind of fits. He was very, very antagonistic towards other doctors. 
because of, you know, his methods. He was actually murdered. He was pushed out a window because they just, you know, they, he, because he had um, very new methods of dealing with, you know, his illnesses and that. So the doctors hated him and he was very, you know, bombastic. That's where we get the word, but yeah. he was very, very arrogant and, and, you know, just very outward and is in, in telling people his theories and all of that. Like, well, I can kind of relate to him anyway. <laughs> so I just thought that was, that was very, very interesting. I don't know if that really is anything to do with, you know, being in contact with a famous spirit. Perhaps it was, you know, maybe he was yeah. just reaching through me in the dream world because they say that you do, they do come through in dreams. You know, and I have had people that, you know, family members that have come to me in dreams, you know, that have passed on. So oh, wow. I, don't, I don't know. It is fascinating um, because you, when you get visitation dreams, they are a lot yeah. different from the normal ones, aren't they? Because you yeah. actually remember. Whereas yeah. the normal ones, like yeah. I, I had a quick sleep earlier because I was shattered. And like, I was having these dreams and like you wake up straight away and you remember them, then it just goes. But sometimes you can actually remember them ongoing and mm -hmm. yeah they're the interesting ones aren't they yeah but yeah but uh yeah but thanks everyone for watching we will go now and um have a nice um afternoon evening marie but thank you for yeah. your time and yeah thank you i had i really enjoyed yeah. myself <laughs> oh i did as well but thanks so much we Sorry, we oh, have had some technical yeah. issues so much, Thank but you. Um, but uh, hey, I hey yeah, it happens, isn't it? But <laughs> but yeah, take care, everyone. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Look after yourself. Bye.